What's up everybody, it's Greg Peters with the Car Passion channel here and I recently had something super awesome happen. One of my subscribers hit me up and he said, hey, I just got my car tuned and it's really down on power, I'm not really sure what to do. So I had him email me his tune, I looked it over and I found a couple very small oversights and he ended up gaining about 50 horsepower at the wheels with his naturally aspirated build. It was super awesome. I'm about to get into the details of what I did and my troubleshooting process and what you might be able to do at home if you're in the same scenario. So let's jump into it. So a gentleman named Sterling hit me up on Instagram and he has an NB2, so it's a factory VVT car. And the situation was that he just had his car remote tuned and it's significantly down on power. And before I get started, I wanna be very upfront and say this video has nothing to do with the tuner. In fact, what I found would have been nearly impossible to catch via remote tuning a car and not actually having it on a dyno and progressively seeing that the power that it's making along the way. So anyways, he did a virtual dyno of his car and it showed 99 wheel horsepower. So of course, if you just paid to have your car tuned and it made 99 horsepower, I'd be pretty bummed as well. The number one thing that could be an issue is virtual dyno is configured wrong. It's very easy to just mess up one little thing and all of a sudden your Miata is making either 50 wheel horsepower or 5,000 wheel horsepower. Okay, so the setup is very important here. But he also sent me some data from his Draggy, which if you don't have a Draggy yet, what are you doing? A Draggy is the 10 Hertz GPS performance meter that can accurately track all types of performance metrics with your Miata. I've covered it before several times here on the channel. And now I have my own coupon code for you guys, CARPASSION10, using the link down below in the description. will save you some money if you wanna get a Draggy. And I'll also link my previous videos about Draggy down below in the description. But Anyways, back on topic. He sent me some draggy data from a zero to 60 run showing over nine seconds. Now that could be due to a very bad launch, but I could see in the graph on the draggy that in the top of second gear, the car seemed to be like really down on power. And he also assured me that virtual dyno was set up correctly and he really sounded like he knew what he was talking about. So I trusted that information that his car was really only making 99 or 100 horsepower at the wheels. Now, luckily, the more power your car is down, usually the easier it is to find the cause. So we had that working in our favor. He said his air to fuel ratios were good. He also sent me a screenshot of his ignition table, which looked totally fine and normal. And he said he compression tested the engine, did a leak down test, everything was showing healthy. And mind you, this is a full bolt on and tuned VVT engine that should be in the range of 150 wheel horsepower, if not more. So at this point, we're pretty sure there's nothing mechanically wrong with the engine. It's got new plugs and wires. The spark plug gap is good. Good compression results, good leak down results. The valve lash is set correctly. It cranks normally and it idles on four cylinders. So it's not like down an entire cylinder or something, but there still has to be something major going on. The next thing I always go to, which I have made a video on this before on for another subscriber that hit me up for a similar reason, which ended up gaining 80 wheel horsepower on his turbo car using less boost. And that was because his timing belt was off about four teeth on the crank. And that's a huge difference in cam timing. And the engine just made absolutely no power and making like 150 wheel horsepower on 15 PSI or something crazy like that. So that's always my next suggestion, but he said that he triple checked the timing and it was all good. So now we know the motor's timed good. There's nothing mechanically wrong with it, you know, at least via all the tests that have been done, it's most likely something in the tune. So I had him email me the tune and the data log and I broke into it and started looking through settings. I also pulled up a data log to check out anything I could possibly see. And the number one thing that I'll look for in a car that's down that much on power is what's going on with AFR and ignition timing. Now the AFR looked completely fine, so that's not gonna be a problem. But ignition timing is where a lot of things can get funny because on a standalone ECU, there are actually a lot of different things that can change your ignition timing. Matte retard is one of them. If the inlet temperature gets too high, which pretty much 
you're only going to encounter on a turbocharged vehicle, you can have the tune pull a lot of timing out of the tune. But if that's set up wrong, it could be pulling a lot of ignition timing out of the tune at normal temperatures. So I checked that and it wasn't a problem. But in Megalog Viewer, you can see how much ignition timing the tune is calling for and how much ignition timing the engine is actually running, assuming that the base timing has been set up correctly. So let's say you install your standalone ECU and you say, ah, base timing doesn't sound important. And you just run the car the way it is without setting it. If your base timing is, let's say 10 degrees too low, so you Normally your base timing will be set at 10 degrees. If your base timing was at zero degrees, even though your ignition table might call for 30 degrees of advance at wide open throttle, it's expecting your base timing to be at 10. But if your mechanical base timing is actually at zero, that means you're really only getting 20 degrees of advance at full throttle. And the tricky part about that is, in the logs, it will still show 30 degrees, even though the timing on the actual engine is only 20 degrees. That's why it's so important to set up your base timing at 10 degrees, because if your spark map is calling for 30 degrees, what it's actually doing is, okay, take base timing plus 20. And if your base timing is 10, you will end up at 30. But if your base timing is zero, you'll only end up at 20. And the ECU has no way of actually catching that and seeing it, which is why setting up your base timing is so important. And I've also had people say, oh, well, I, I wanna set my base timing up at 14 to do the 14 degree timing advance. On a standalone ECU, you don't do that. You don't need to do that and you shouldn't be doing that. When you have a stock ECU in the car, when you do the 14 degree advance mod, you are changing your timing. What you're doing is you're moving the entire spark map advanced by four degrees. When you have a standalone ECU, you don't need to do that trick because you actually have control over the whole spark map. So that's the reason why you have to set your base timing up at 10 degrees. So he used his timing light and he verified that base timing is exactly at 10 degrees. So that's good. One minor note with that, when you set your base timing up, there's a setting in the tune called either fix fire or fixed advance. And what that will do is it will lock the tune in at 10 degrees. And no matter what other settings are calling for, it's gonna lock that timing at 10 degrees, no matter what in the tune. Then you can set up the either the mechanical, um, if you have a crank angle sensor or a cast on the back of your cam, you can adjust that until your actual timing is 10 degrees, or you can make a change to the offset within the tuning software so that your timing, you have to use a timing light for this, and you point it at the crank and it's showing 10 degrees, which means the actual timing on the engine is 10 degrees, the tune is in fixed fire mode at 10 degrees, those two numbers have to match. What people forget sometimes, and I've even forgotten this myself, is you have to take the mode out of fixed fire or fixed advance, because otherwise, again, it will just lock your timing at 10 degrees, and if you've ever done a pull in a Miata at 10 degrees of advance, they make roughly 70 wheel horsepower. It's a it's a big deal. Like you don't want to be stuck at 10 degree advance. So again, it was verified that the tune was not stuck in fixed fire. So within the data log, I checked out what the spark map was calling for versus after any adders or subtractors of timing, what the actual engine timing was at. And that's when I discovered there's a problem here. So if we jump into the data log of this pull, there's a couple things to look at here. The white line is RPM. It's a full throttle pull going from low RPM to roughly red line. The red line is what the spark map is calling for without any modifiers. So you can see at this snapshot right here, 6,300 RPM, the spark map normally would call for 30 degrees, which is normal. Now the green line is the base spark advance. So for some reason, the ECU is calling for just 19 degrees rather than what the actual map is calling for. So that's an issue on its own. But the yellow line is the final spark advance, and that takes the base spark advance and applies whatever modifiers are changing the base. And that's all the way down at 11 degrees. And as I just said a second ago, if you do a full throttle pull and you're stuck at 10 degrees or 11 degrees, it makes a huge difference in power. In fact, here's a virtual dyno I did 
on the NB, purposely locking the timing in at 10 degrees, just to show you how much of a difference that can make. So the next thing was trying to figure out why is it doing that? And I noticed in the data log that there was no TPS signal. It just showed 0% TPS. And then I looked at the photo of Sterling's car and I saw that it had no throttle position sensor. And I said, how come you have no throttle position sensor? And he said, oh, it's an auto to manual swap. And I just haven't got that either installed or hooked up or, or whatever, which you don't need a TPS to tune your car. I actually ran without a TPS on my 1.6 turbo setup for a long time and it never caused any issues. But one thing I noticed in the idle settings is he had it set up to use the idle advance table or the idle advance mode, which is where if the ECU thinks the engine is idling, it will use a separate little spark table or a curve to set your ignition timing. Since the throttle position always showed as 0%, the ECU thought the engine was always idling. Now let me hop into the tuning software and show you why that's a problem. If I come up here to start up and idle and go to idle advance settings, you can see that idle advance is on. So if the ECU thinks the engine is idling, which in this case is all the time, it's gonna lock it into this little table right here and you can see it's at about 19 degrees so the timing was always locked into 19 degrees but it doesn't end there you can see idle rpm timing correction is also turned on and that's under the startup and idle menu rpm timing correction curve now what this curve does is if the engine is supposed to be idling according to the ecu and it's got an idle rpm target which might be eight or nine hundred obviously during a pull the actual rpm is significantly higher than that so the ECU will try to pull additional timing in order to get the RPM to come back down. Now on this table here, that's right about at eight degrees. So what was happening is base timing was locked in at 19 degrees because the ECU thought the engine was idling and the timing correction curve was also applied to that, taking an additional eight degrees, bringing the final advance all the way down to 11. Now, of course, there's a very easy fix for this and that's just turning off the idle advance setting. So the ECU will just use the spark map no matter what, and it will never turn on idle advance. Now, if your engine really needs idle advance to have a stable idle, you can leave that setting active and then just make it so the engine doesn't rely on the TPS signal to know when to enter or exit idle advance mode. You can actually also use the vehicle speed sensor. So there's a couple options there. So I said, okay, first thing you do, turn off idle advance, that seems to be your main problem. The other minor thing that I found is that the VVT advance table has quite a bit of advance in the high RPM. I think it was around 22 degrees at 6,000 and maybe 12 degrees at 7,000. And every dyno tuned VVT table I've ever seen is near or zero VVT advance above 5,000. And that's just what makes the most power. So we turned off idle advance. I said, drop your VVT angle in the high RPM, take your car out for a pull, do a virtual dyno and get back to me. And he got back to me all right with a virtual dyno graph that showed 144 wheel horsepower on his first pull. And he said after he took the car out and also made the tweaks to the VVT tune and everything and, and did several pulls, he managed a pull of 157 wheel horsepower, which is actually I believe right on track for what that engine should be making. Full bolt-on VVT motor with headers, exhaust, skunk two intake manifold, and a tune. And man, I cannot imagine doing a pull and making 99 horsepower, changing two settings, and the car makes 150 plus. It just has to feel like a totally different car. 50% 50 more horsepower. And I also want to show off the new and improved Draggy Run. Obviously, a 7.4 second 0 to 60 is a significant improvement, but we all know that the launches can heavily affect the 0 to 60. What I want to pay special attention to here is the top end of second gear. You can see the before and after where before the fixes were made in the tune, the acceleration was visually dropping off, and now you can see the acceleration is consistent all the way through second gear. It follows that straight line trajectory, which is pretty much what you'd expect at least for first and second gear before wind resistance really starts to take effect. So anyways, I just wanted to make a short video sharing that with you guys. I figure it could help someone out. I've experienced things like that even on my own Miatas where they're down on power because of some simple setting in the tune that when you're first breaking into the tuning world, which I know a lot of Miata owners, it's like 
the first car they've ever tuned or dealt with tuning software. And there are a lot of little things, you know, little, uh, little boxes you can check that can really affect the power level of the car. So um, just want to give you guys some ideas, get those juices flowing if you're reviewing the tunes in your own cars. And yeah, let me know if you've ever experienced anything like this. So congratulations, Sterling, on your newfound power. I hope you're out there absolutely ripping your Miata as I film this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I really hope you learned something. Don't forget to check out my link to Draggy down in the description below, as well as my coupon code if you wanna pick one up. I'll actually be using this in an upcoming street tuning video, but until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.